Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. The link between the energy transition and the metals and minerals needed to drive the shift to net zero is coming under the spotlight globally and locally. Terence Screamer joins me to unpack the implications for South Africa and Africa. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. Why is there such a strong link between metal, metals and minerals and the energy transition? Well, I think the last energy transition, as we all know, was driven by oil. And as we move into these new technologies, battery electric vehicles, fuel cell electric vehicles, using electrolyzers to produce hydrogen, using solar panels to produce electricity, using onshore and offshore wind turbines, there's a shift towards metals and minerals. Uh, and they're fairly metals and minerals intensive. A, a battery electric vehicle is quite considerably heavier than a, uh, a conventional internal combustion engine car. The metals intensity of an offshore wind turbine is, is, is considerable. And also it involves minerals that, uh, that we probably don't know necessarily the names of, these rare earth minerals that are used in magnets, etc. So we know the, the coppers and the cobalts and the lithium as well and the manganese, but we might not know some of these rare earth minerals, their names, and we're having to do uh, exploration and development for that. So it's come under a lot of focus. The security of supply issues are, are gaining attention globally. Uh, there's a lot of research going into this, uh, as well as there's a focus from various governments and blocks. For instance, the, the US government has a critical minerals list looking from a supply, security of supply perspective. So does the European Union and others. And then there's producer countries such as Australia and Canada that are seeing this as an opportunity and are also producing critical minerals list, both from a security of supply perspective but also from a, a producer opportunity. It's a big, new, evolving global opportunity and a risk. As you mentioned, there are concerns about security of supply. Yes, I mean, the International Energy Agency, for one, you know, they look at the energy transition. They've always looked at security of supply of things like gas and oil over the many years that they've been in existence. And they now having a, uh, annually now putting out a critical um, a metals and minerals review. So they are having their finger on the pulse and they are, are concerned that there's not enough uh, exploration and development. This week, McKinsey uh, put out a report and they show that there has to be a real scale up both on the exploration side, but also on the, the project development side and the production side, if we're not going to have a, su a supply crunch on a number of these minerals. And they're talking about sort of $4 trillion of investment that's going to be needed by 2030, just to sort of keep pace. That's sort of $400 billion a year of investment that needs to go into mining, into smelting, into refining. and. Uh, and we know we're really starting to see supply site uh, crunches in a number of these minerals. And what's adding to the attention is that they have geopolitical uh, pressures arising around the world, entering a sort of a, f a feeling of a new Cold War. And some of these minerals are quite heavily concentrated in specific regions. And countries outside of those regions are naturally wanting to look for other locations. Now we know in the oil world, we had this whole issue of the high concentration in the Middle East, and that drove uh, geopolitical tensions around the world, and we would see oil price spikes uh, around uh, when there was, say, conflict in certain countries in the Middle East. A Gulf War comes to mind, and there, there is potential if this is not well managed. The difference is this: many of these metals and minerals are quite well dispersed, but under underexplored. So unless we up our exploration game, there's, there's going to be concern. And I think one of the big uh, key crunch points is, is around mining skills. So there's going to be need a lot more mining engineers. And actually, around the world, we're seeing, seeing the, the graduate intake and outflow is actually under pressure. It's falling. So we're going to need a lot more mining professionals. And that, other than the exploration side and then getting the projects through the different regulatory approvals, because that's also very difficult these days to get all the regulatory approvals. But also just to have the skills and the people in place is going to be a, a major crunch point. There are some emerging opportunities for South Africa and Africa. 
Yes, I mean, South Africa, I think, even though we are a mining country and a metals and minerals country, I think there's a feeling we are quite underexplored, especially for these sort of critical minerals. Uh, and our exploration, although we have this aspiration to get much more exploration going, it's just flatlined and there hasn't been a very supportive environment. We haven't had a good uh, uh, sort of system uh, in terms of visibility. The cadastre, as we know, has been a major issue and we still haven't got one in place, whereas many other countries around in the region are, really are well ahead of us in terms of that and giving people visibility and uh, sort of uh, the sort of confidence to do more exploration in South Africa. So that's one point. Also, there's a resistance, obviously, uh, to mining, um, a growing resistance around the world. So to get through the different regulatory hoops, that's, that's going to be uh, an issue. And, and rightfully so. We have to do this in a, an environmentally sustainable way. These technologies are there to make us more environmentally sustainable. So the, the supply chains into them also need to be more sustainable. And there has to be a sort of a life cycle approach, a lot more focus on uh, a circular economy approach, a recycling. Having said all that, though, there's no doubt that South Africa and Africa have many of the minerals that are needed for this energy transition. The country that most comes to mind, obviously, is the Democratic Republic of Congo, which has a number of these key battery minerals, and uh, these need to be uh, mined in a responsible way. And there's obviously a lot of interest in the cobalt out of the DRC, a high heavy concentration of cobalt in that jurisdiction. But again, copper, you know, as we see with the problems in Chile in, uh, in particular at the moment around mining, which is a major copper jurisdiction, and the electrification of just about everything, the copper needs to go into just about everything. So copper is going to be a major focus again in the DRC. But South Africa has a number of these minerals uh, already. Obviously, we're known for coal, and that's going to taper over time. But we have platinum group metals, which goes into some of these things. For instance, fuel cells and electrolyzers. Uh, that the electrolyzers are needed to crack the water into uh, to, to produce green hydrogen using uh, renewable electricity. So those, well, some of the technologies use platinum group metals, not all of them. But so there's there's that opportunity. Manganese is a massive play because that goes into a number of batteries. We've got uh, vanadium, which goes into some of the emerging battery technologies coming through. So we already have a number of these, uh, these minerals, uh, and it's about really upping our exploration game and then getting our processes in place so that we have a, a very systematic um, and business-friendly, investor-friendly environment for exploration and development and for project development. Then, then obviously, this responsible mining practice. I think the, the, the issues that we can see in the environment around Zama Zamas that are sort of going into the old, in Kharteng being an old uh, gold mining area and people still uh, moving into those shafts through the different ventilation shafts or whatever, however they are attacking those resources. We can see the social fallout that come, can come and it's deadly and devastating. And then there's obviously the environmental fallout which is concerned particularly around the banding of coal mines and the, the water pollution that, and the soil pollution that is coming with that. So we have to also make sure that we are a responsible miner and then I think ultimately a recycler of many of these, uh, these, these minerals and metals so that demand is not only satisfied by new mine production but increasingly above, above surface already used and then recycled uh, metals. So I think it is an opportunity for Africa, but we have to go in with our eyes wide open to the risks as well. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.